Hadley, a um, lot of questions. I was going to ask you what happens next, but I want to go back one stage before we do that and ask, uh, why has Mr Trump done this? It seems obvious to many that it was an election pre pledge, but why has he actually done this? And is it going to increase security or decrease security in the region? Well, I don't think it's any coincidence, Steve, that this comes just a couple of days after what we saw happening in those Lebanese elections with Hezbollah really gaining ground there. Of course, this is a question of regional stability as well, and it plays very much into the narrative that we've heard from Saudi Arabia over the last couple of years, the Saudi versus Iran narrative, this extension of a Shia crescent coming from Tehran to Damascus to Beirut as well. And I think it was really interesting that in that speech, President Trump also making a big play there about calming tensions in the region, talking about the threat of a nuclear arms race in the region, because of course you have to remember Mohammed bin Salman, the crown prince of Saudi Arabia, just a couple of months ago, coming out and saying, you know, if Iran were to get a bomb, we would get a bomb too. It's just about our regional security. So I thought that was interesting that the president used that as justification or further justification for his decision on Iran. But of course that has caused some major pushback from Iran itself. Let's listen into what the president had to say. I have ordered the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to negotiate and lobby with the European countries and two other countries, Russia and China, and carry out the necessary coordination with them. If at the end of this short period of time and deadline we conclude that, with the cooperation of the five countries, we can achieve whatever the Iranian nations want out of the deal, the nuclear deal will remain in place despite the desire of the US and the Zionist regime, their efforts and tonight's rude remarks from Trump, and we can take steps to the benefit of the region and the world's peace and security. Now, here in the Gulf Arab countries, of course, we've heard support for this decision from President Trump. We've heard support from the foreign minister of Saudi Arabia. We saw also hearing support from the UAE as well and Bahrain itself. But, of course, you have to remember that this is, as you know, a bit of a double-edged sword here because while they're uh, using this as their sort of geopolitical springboard to continue uh, their fight against Iran's proxies, whether they be in Yemen or Lebanon, there are also bigger questions at play over what this will mean for OPEC and non-OPEC members as well and those relationships we've already heard from Saudi Arabia's oil minister basically coming out and said that they would make up for the shortfall in the market if there is going to be any. And of course, the question going forward is how that's going to play out in those relationships. So much economic diplomacy has gone on over the last several years in terms of rapprochement with Russia, in terms of what the Saudis in particular have tried to do with One Belt, One Road and getting very close to the Chinese in the last several years, particularly when it comes to energy. So we're just going to have to wait and see what this will actually mean for those oil markets, guys. Hey everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.